But again, we're talking today about the legacy of Alexei Navalny, who has died at the age of 47 in a Russian prison. As Willie pointed out, this is a man with a family who has lived with uh, this type of threat in their lives um, since they knew him. And now the worst has happened. Uh, Willie? Let's bring into the conversation the chief White House correspondent for The New York Times, Peter Baker. He joins us by phone from the Munich Security Conference, where many world leaders are gathered today. Uh, Peter, what's the early reaction to this news there? Yeah, Willie, obviously, there's shock uh, here in Munich. You're right. A lot of world leaders, a lot of European leaders are here to talk about security in Europe. And, of course, Russia is front and center. I'm here uh, with the vice president, Vice President Kamala Harris, who's supposed to give a speech at 8.30 a.m. your time, East Coast time. And she's, she's already planning to talk about, you know, the, the, this confrontation with Russia. Obviously, the death of Alexei Navalny will, uh, you know, add an obvious urgency to that conversation. He was well respected, especially here in Germany, where they rescued him once he was poisoned by Vladimir Putin's FSB. And he decided, against all advice, I think, to return to Russia knowing that he would be uh, very likely locked up. And, and as we know from history, if you go into one of Vladimir Putin's prisons, you're very likely not going to come out. So, Peter, um, Jonathan just reminded us that he had a conversation with the president back in 2021 at a summit in Geneva where he asked very pointedly, if Alexei Navalny, Navalny is killed, if he dies in a prison in Russia, what would be the consequences? And President Biden responded, I told President Putin that the consequences would be devastating, his word for Russia. What should we take that to mean? Well, it's hard to know. In 2021, of course, we hadn't yet seen the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we had therefore not yet taken a lot of the measures that we have taken since then, the United States, that is, against uh, Russia in terms of sanctions and so forth. It's hard to know what additional uh, measures that they have available to them to respond to this that they haven't already taken for the invasion of Ukraine. But I, I imagine the pressure is going to be rather uh, significant on the Biden administration to find a way to respond and make clear that this is not, you know, uh, accepted in the West. Uh, nobody's going to believe the Russian story that he suddenly collapsed on his own uh, on a walk uh, while in prison. It's just not uh, it's not going to sell. Uh, but the tools available to the Biden administration, I'm not clear what they would be at this point that they haven't already used uh, to try to punish them for Ukraine. And maybe that's why Vladimir Putin or his government decided there would be no uh, significant consequences if something like this happened. And that, that's an open question. We haven't confirmed the circumstances of Navalny's death, but as Peter says, the Russian prison service claims he went for a walk and collapsed. We should point out just in the last couple of days, Navalny appeared for a, a prison, a hearing while he was in prison, was smiling and laughing through that, as he often does. Um, so, Peter, we've been talking about the way that Republicans in the Senate, Republicans in the House lately in particular have been talking about Russia. Of course, how Donald Trump has talked about Russia and Vladimir Putin for a long time in glowing terms. Senators this week saying Putin's on top of his game. We shouldn't fund Ukraine because it has no chance to beat the powerful army of Russia on and on and on. Do you think the death of Navalny changes any of the calculus in the Congress right now about getting aid to Ukraine? Well, that's a good question. I don't think it changes Donald Trump's calculus. He never cared much about distance to begin with. I don't think he ever cared much about Alexei Navalny. And as long as he's still in the same, taking the same position that he takes, I think that, uh, you know, we've seen that's dispositive right now with a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill. As long as he is against aid for Ukraine, a, a lot of Republicans are going to go along with him despite what's happened now to Alexei Navalny. But I think you're right that it adds a certain uh, you know, a moral clarity, I think, for the argument that people who are for Ukraine aid will look at this and point to this and say, D don't forget who's on the other side of this war. Don't forget uh, who is in the Kremlin pulling the strings here and what they're capable of. Because, uh, you know, Alexei Navalny was seen by Vladimir Putin as a potential threat to his rule, and he paid the price for it. And I think that's a, a reminder of what kind of uh, government there is right now in Moscow.